In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at this, Reolink's latest camera, the Reolink Duo. We're going to be running through the unboxing, the setup and installation, and if you stick around till the end, I'll be sharing with you my thoughts and opinions on the camera, and also how you can add this thing into Home Assistant. Check it out. And that's a little look at the duo, but just to point out a couple of things from that footage. The first one is that little black tripod that I'm using isn't actually part of the camera. It's just a small black tripod that I'm using just for the purposes of setting up and testing this camera. Reolink do provide you with a wall mount which can be attached to either the top or the bottom of the camera. But if you're a regular viewer of my videos or you caught my recent live stream, then you'll know that I'm in the process of moving house, so I didn't want to go adding things to the walls, and this tripod managed to do the job perfectly. The other thing I wanted to point out is the fact that this camera's got a striking likeness to that of Disney's Wally. -E. Okay, let's dive into this thing's technical features. Let's start off with the obvious one then. So this thing features dual lenses, whereas traditional security cameras just have the one lens. And the benefit of this is that you can see more of a wide area as opposed to just being able to see one set area with the one lens. Having the dual lenses allows you to see over 150 degrees of wide viewing area, which is huge and you basically get two cameras in one. The Duo features a four megapixel camera with a resolution of 2560 by 1440 and a maximum frame rate of 25 FPS. If for whatever reason you want to, you can also lower that resolution and frame rate and you can lower it to a low of 640 by 360 and the low frame rate of 4 FPS. The 4 megapixel camera is Reolink's 2K camera that they refer to as the Super HD camera. It's got a 4mm lens and an f of 1.6 and when making use of both of those cameras you get a wide viewing area of 150 degrees and a vertical viewing area of 44 degrees. Like most security cameras, it features a day and night mode. It utilizes features like IR cut to make the images more viewable in the day, and uses auto switching to automatically swap the image to nighttime mode when the light levels are below a set point. To accommodate that nighttime mode, you've got the choice of infrared night vision or colored night vision. The infrared night vision makes use of six infrared LEDs with a supposed maximum distance of 30 meters, while the colored night vision makes use of eight five watt spotlights with a maximum brightness of 560 lumens. In this video we're looking at the Wi-Fi version of the camera, but you can also get three other models. You can get the PoE version, the battery powered version and the 4G version. Each of the four camera models have the same physical camera specification, but they've got different internals to offer different connectivity to match your needs and locations. All of the cameras are water resistant and have an IP rating of IP66, and with this being the Wi-Fi model it can connect to both 2.4 and 5 GHz networks. With saving the camera's footage, you can save the footage directly to the camera by making use of an SD card, and you can use an SD card of up to 256 gig. You can also make use of either Reolink's NVR or a third party one, or you can use FTP to save the footage elsewhere. The video format is H.264 and the camera offers a mainstream and a substream, both of which the frame rate and resolutions are configurable for. The cameras were clearly made to be used with an NVR and they've got OnViv as well as a whole bunch of other different standards and protocols which you'd expect from a camera like this. Some of the other notable features of the camera is it's got a microphone and it supports two-way audio. It can also make use of Reolink's user management system which allows you to add 20 users to the camera with one of these users being an admin and 19 of the rest being standard users. The camera also supports 12 simultaneous streams and 10 of these streams can be the substream and two of them can be the mainstream. 
The camera connects with Reolink software and you can control the camera by using the Reolink app, the Reolink desktop client or the Reolink web client. From any of those three points of access, you can control and configure all of the camera's features and settings. You can set up and fine tune the sensitivity for motion, people and vehicle detection, as well as adjusting the recording schedule for it. You can also set up things like privacy masks to block out set areas of the camera and also set up push notifications to receive notifications based on the camera's events. So those are the tech specs for the camera. Now let's have a look at what's in the box and how we set it up. Just to point this out, I was given an early review version of this camera, which is why it's just in a plain brown box. So at the time of recording this, the final packaging hasn't yet been decided on, but when the product ships on Wednesday 21st, the final packaging will be included. So you'll get a nice Reolink themed box with all the product details and pictures on it. Inside the box, you'll find the waterproof lid installation guide, as well as the quick start guide and the standard Reolink security stickers. If you've got the wireless version of the camera, you'll also get two screw on antennas. You'll then get a DC power cable with a plug head to match your region, as well as an ethernet cable and a power cable extender. Now it's nice that they also include the ethernet cable and power cable extender, as sometimes it's just nice to test the camera on your table or workbench before you actually put it in place. And it's handy to have that power cable extender, especially if you're running the camera outside. We've then got the camera mount, which comes in two pieces. You've got the plastic mounting arm and the mounting plate. The mounting wall plate is made out of metal and you simply attach that to the wall and then you attach the plastic metal arm to that plate. Even though the mountain arm's made out of plastic, it does feel very strong and durable and it supposedly can support the weight of 1.5 kg. The mountain arm can be attached to either the bottom or the top of the camera and it features a small ball joint which allows you to rotate the camera vertically and horizontally. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, I'm not making use of the mount to avoid putting any extra holes in the wall and I'm just using a small tripod. We've then got the waterproof cover for the ethernet cable and also the screws and wall plugs for your camera mount. Reolink also provides you with a PosiDrive screwdriver which can be used to attach the camera to the mount and also to open the SD card slot. And finally we've got the camera. On the front of the camera you'll find those dual lenses as well as the spotlights and infrared LEDs and towards the back you'll find two symmetrical ports for the antennas to attach to. Both the top and bottom of the camera feature the universal camera mounting hole. The short cable that comes from the camera splits into both ethernet and power and you can plug in those cables as needed. On the bottom of the camera you'll find the micro SD card slot which is held in by two screws. I was quite surprised that this camera is made out of a hard plastic as when you look at it it does look like it's got a solid metal frame but it is just in fact hard plastic. Towards the back of the camera is also where you'll find the speaker grill and that's pretty much it for this camera. So onto the camera setup. With the Wi-Fi version of the camera we're going to need to take the left and right antennas and attach them to the sides of the camera. Once they're firmly attached we're going to plug the camera in to start the setup process if at this point you've got the Wi-Fi camera and you wanted to make use of Ethernet, you can also plug the Ethernet cable in now. With the camera now plugged in, you'll start to hear it beep, which means it's ready to be connected to. And all you're going to need to do if you're not already a Reolink user is download the Reolink app and click add. It's then going to ask you to scan a QR code. With the camera added to the app, you can view the camera's live stream and start playing around with the various other camera features. You don't have to have the Reolink app on your phone or tablet to set up the camera, so if you don't want to use those then you can totally avoid them if you want, and you can make use of the Reolink desktop client and you can do the full setup process using that. But I definitely recommend the Reolink app, it looks good, it works really well, you can access pretty much all of the camera features, and they've recently just updated the whole UI so it looks nicer. Having the app also allows you to quickly access your camera's live feeds and you can make use of features such as push notifications. We're now going to have a quick look at some of the camera's features as well as briefly touch on the app and the Reolink desktop client. Now I will be coming back to those things and covering them in a lot more depth and detail in a future video. In a future video that I've got planned we're going to be looking at the PoE version of this camera as well as combining it with an MVR. So expect more details in that video and I'll have that linked above and also in the description when that's available. Let's start with the camera's main features then, which is of course the dual lenses. The dual lens system works really well. When you rotate your phone within the Reolink app, it switches to this super wide camera view. This allows you to see each of the two camera channels side by side in that super wide view. And again, this works really well. The only issue here is if you get a subject within the middle of the two images. If the thing or person you're looking at on the camera happens to go directly in between the two cameras, then you get this weird splitting effect going on where part of the image is on one side and part is on the other and they're kind of a bit too close to it and it just makes it seem a bit weird. Other than that split in the middle, the cameras look and work great in both daytime and nighttime. 
At night time that split in the middle is even less noticeable, however in the above video you can see a clear difference between the two channels and that's because the channel on the left was getting a lot of interference from the infrared bouncing off the wall making the image a lot brighter and this was just before I managed to tweak the settings and turn that down. The position of my duo works really well as I can see straight across the front of my house and then all to the right across the garden and then up towards the road. This is something that wouldn't be possible if you were just using one camera. The quality of your recorded videos is pretty good and you can pick out a lot of details from within them. However I did notice if you were using the dual cameras then you don't actually get full access to the top quality. And I don't know if this is an intentional thing, maybe it's a limitation because there's two streams open or maybe it's just a software thing and it can be fixed in a later update. And what I mean by this is that both the desktop client and the app only allow you to view and record the mid or low quality streams as opposed to being able to view the full high quality one you can view when you're looking at just one channel. The nighttime mode and infrared camera work really well and it's really easy to see what's going on in the dark. Both motion and person detection work well, however I did find it needed to tweak the sensitivity of the motion detection as with the default settings I was getting a lot of false positives. From within the Reolink app you can change the sensitivity of the motion detection and you can turn on and off push notifications and also create a schedule for them so you can have set times when you can and can't receive them. The camera's got a siren which you can have automatically activate based on a motion event or you can manually trigger it from within the app and it sounds a little something like this. It also features two-way audio which sounds a little like this. This is an example of Reolink's two-way audio. And this is what the audio sounds like from the other side. To me both the audio that's output from the camera speakers and the recorded audio sound very tinny. The audio that's output from the speakers sounds a bit patchy and just not good and the audio that's recorded also picks up a lot of background noise so sometimes it can be hard to actually hear the person that's speaking and I was speaking pretty close to the camera. By default audio recordings turned off for the camera and you have to manually turn it on. The spotlights on the camera do a good job of lighting up its surrounding area however this is another one I found I had to adjust the default settings as full brightness just seems to blow out all the images. To get the camera added into Home Assistant, there's a couple of different methods that we can use. We could make use of the camera's RTSP streams or use OnViv and the OnViv integration to add them in. However, I'm going to be making use of the custom integration that's available on Hacks. And the reason for this is that using the Hacks integration is going to give me a couple of extra features like some extra entities that you can't access using RTSP or OnViv. If you don't want to use Hacks and you want to use those other methods that I mentioned, then be sure to check out the video linked above and also in the description where I show you three other ways of adding the Reolink cameras into Home Assistant. So obviously to get started with this, we're going to need to have Hacks installed. Now if you haven't got Hacks installed and you have no idea what it is or how to go about installing it, I created a video a little while ago on how to actually do this, so go and check that out. And if you've got Hacks installed, then you're going to be good to go. So we're going to want to open up Hacks and we're going to choose Integrations. We're then going to choose the three dots in the top right corner and we're going to choose custom repositories. We're then going to need to add a new custom repository URL and I'll have this URL in the description below so feel free to just copy and paste that in. We then just need to set the category for this and the category is just going to be integration and we're just going to press add. We should then see the Reolink IP camera integration there and we can just close hacks and now all we need to do is just give Home Assistant a quick reboot and we can add our Reolink cameras. Once Home Assistant comes back to life, we can add our new Reolink integration. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we're going to press configuration and then we're going to press integrations. And from here, we're going to just press the add integration button in the bottom right there. With that open, we're just going to do a search for Reolink. And we should see the Reolink IP camera appear there. So I'm going to press that. It should then just take a couple of seconds to actually set up the Reolink integration. Once that's done, we're going to need to provide a host name, a username and a password. The host name is going to be the IP address of your Reolink camera. You can get this from the Reolink app or if you know how to get into your router settings you can get it from there. You may want to create a custom user account for the camera to use, however in this demo I'm just making use of the admin account. So I've got those details entered and I'm just going to hit submit. Now typically at this point if we were just adding a normal Reolink camera we'd get the success message now and we'd be able to add that camera straight to Home Assistant but as this is the duo we're going to need to select which channel we want. So you can adjust the channel selection by just dragging the slider so you can have one or two. You can have both channels viewable in Home Assistant but you'll need to repeat this process in order to add the second channel. So let's go ahead and just add channel one for now. So we've got channel one selected and we're just going to hit submit. And we can see the success message and we can assign this to an area but for now we're just going to hit finish. And we can see down here in my integrations list I've now got that Reolink IP camera. 
And as I didn't bother to name it, it's got the super useful name of just one. But if we select that device there, it's going to take us into the device list. Within this device, I can see all the information about the entities. So I can see the camera stream there. I can see if the IR lights are turned on or off. I can see when the last event occurred. I can see if there's any motion. And I can also see if record audio is turned on or off. You can also rename the camera here. So if you wanted to rename it to something more helpful than just one, you could do that. If we wanted to view information about the camera, we could utilize these entities on the left here. So if we wanted to view information about the different motion detections, we could select that one and we could click the history button. And then from here, we can view all the different detections that have happened. So we can see it was clear, then motion event detected, and then clear again. If we wanted to view the camera's live stream, we could select this top entity here and click the settings button. And the camera stream should just appear in your browser. Now, if you've got sound turned on for the camera, you should also be able to hear sound. Now, I have found that there is a couple of seconds delay, and I'd say maybe it's four or five seconds. So it's not super instant live, but it's better than nothing at all. This is the Wi-Fi version. So if you're making use of an Ethernet cable or the PoE version, you're probably going to get an even smaller delay. But either way, that's how you get it into Home Assistant. If you want the second camera, you're going to need to repeat those steps that we did for adding the first camera. But this time, you're going to want to select the other channel. So in this case, it's going to be channel two. And I'll hit submit. And we can see there it's successfully added the well-named camera two. So I can hit finish there. Back in the device list, I can now view all those entities and view both camera streams. And I did rename the camera from two to be right duo just because it makes more sense. I've not really had the camera long enough yet to actually make my mind up about it. But here's my initial thoughts. I think the design of this camera isn't everyone's cup of tea and it might look a little bit strange sticking Wally on the side of your house. But if you think about it, you're getting one camera which has got those dual lenses in. So you're getting that super wild field of view and that might be enough for some people to overlook the strange design. For me personally, I do like that robot head design, but it's not as discreet as other smart home cameras. And if you consider this to other Reolink cameras, take the Argus 3 Pro, for example, that's a very small smart home camera. And I can tell you from personal experience, this thing does not get the wife approval factor, no matter how much it looks like Wally. The dual lens system works really well, and it's a very interesting take to see that added to a camera. It will also be interesting to see if other camera manufacturers start adding the dual lenses to their cameras. Now onto the things that I don't like. I personally don't like the audio quality of this camera and I know that it's a camera so I'm not expecting it to have telephone quality levels but the audio is poor and it's very tinny and quite often it's hard to hear what someone's saying through the camera so if you're speaking directly into your app or through the computer and outputting that sound the speakers just aren't very powerful and the same goes for the siren because that speaker is not very powerful the siren's not super loud. The other thing that I don't like can probably be fixed in a future software update, but it's the fact that you can't view both cameras side by side like you can in the app using the Reolink desktop client. Now, personally, I think that that's a missed opportunity because it seems a shame that you can't view that full 150 degrees whilst you're on a PC. Now, you can use the grid view and you can have the cameras next to each other like that, but the grid view offers a minimum of four cameras. So you'd either have both cameras next to each other and then two black empty spaces, or you'd have the two top cameras and then an empty space and then a third camera. And it kind of just ruins the immersion of it for that 150 degree view. This has been a very quick look at the camera, but as I said, I will be back to do a full in-depth review of it after I've had a bit longer to actually play with it. Let me know in the comments below what you think of Reolink's latest camera. Are dual lenses the way to go? If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like. And if you're not already, hit that subscribe button and ding dong the notification bell. You'll then be alerted to any future video that I do. As always, a massive thank you to these awesome dudes. These awesome dudes are my Patreons. If you're interested in supporting my channel and becoming one of these awesome dudes, then there'll be a link to my Patreon in the description below. By becoming a Patreon member, you gain access to some exclusive perks and extra content, and you also massively help my channel out. But thank you for watching, and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.